Welcome, welcome. It's about that time. It is Wednesday evening. Oh man, it's been a long time. I used to do a radio show on Wednesday evenings, Celtic Traditions, back on, uh, actually on a couple of channels, KOCV FM and KLBO AM. Those were good times. That was a long time ago. I almost got into my announcer voice thing. Hey, Miss Tangle. Hey, Miss uh, Constance. How y'all doing? Yeah, just noticed it. <laughs> Miss Tangle, you, uh, you, uh, you don't notice things. But it's good to have you here. We're going to play Star Trek tonight. We were in the middle of a thing. Last time was the time when I just laughed my butt off because of uh, uh, Kirk just just ruining that, that poker table. Hey, Jeff, how y'all doing? My wife called me a smart butt. What What is that a response to? Oh. Okay. Anyway, I had to start the stream and then stop the stream and then start the stream again because I forgot to put the right title on. We're playing Star Trek tonight, Judgment Right. So let's find the game. I believe that's in my DOS box. No, it's not. It's under Linux. Hello, T. Polly. I'm trying to keep my mind together. So I haven't had a lot of sleep. I didn't go to bed at all last night. Why does that say stop? Oh, it started itself. And why can't I hear any sound yet? Sound is on. Why isn't that on? Device not connected. How about that one? Maybe? I can't tell if it's working or not. Okay, it did something. I forgot this is the one that has the weird setup where I have to uh, have it full screened. But it looks like it's working now. No man has gone before. Ah. All right. So I was saying, I haven't had a lot of sleep. I stayed up all night. We will do this. Chalkboard. We were trying to get the chalkboard. Or maybe we just got the chalkboard. Anyway, I took a four or five hour nap in the middle of today. Woke up, went straight to the shop, and built a shelf where I got to sweat profusely. And then made it back here with about five minutes to spare. I'm still catching my breath. I'm so sleepy. This could end before it's supposed to, but we've got the timer running. Lisa's managing the clock as usual. And even though I've had four people speak to me, this thing still says there's only one viewer. I wish it would count everybody. Everybody needs to talk at once for you guys to be counted in here. All right, so do we have... Let's see our inventory. We have a clock. We do not have a chalkboard. Okay. Let's talk to people. See where we are. I'm glad you're glad to help me. Interesting. And let's go back and see if the guys who we ruined are still playing. Oh, they're still playing. Oh, Suntagad. Ha! <laughs> I need you to sprint room around a chalkboard. We were trying. Oh, right on. I guess we progressed the plot just now. Let's go see if we can talk to the commander. I guess he's in the armory. Which is over here. Yeah, see, it still says one viewer. There's the armory. We need a transfer. Hmm. 
It shows five now. It just jumped up to that. I quit affecting it. <laughs> That's right. We need to get them out for some reason. I cannot remember. All right. Can we pinch one of these guys? Okay. Can we tie them up? Well, then go pinch him like I told you to. Hmm. All right. It's got to be somebody we haven't talked to. Let's go find somebody. Did we talk to this little boy? Oh, that's a girl. Yes. Ignore me? Oh, there we go. No. Can I shoot you? I remember that. No. <laughs> okay, so we talked to all these guys. Let's go tell this dude that we delivered his locket. Or not locket, but his uh, paper letter. Talk to dude. Okay, so there's nothing to do here either. Why can't I leave? There we go. And uh, who was in this? I don't even remember what building this was. Oh, is this that dude where I swept the carpet? It is! We are menacing. These dudes just coming in to, on this dude's house. Yeah. Okay, we talked to him about that. The glorious Baron. Mm hmm. Have we questioned the cat? Ah, okay. Oh, good. Can you fix it? Oh, we tried that last time, too. Meow. Can we take the broom back? Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, we are out. Hmm. We've got to find a way to... Have we gone this way? 
We've got to find a way to get that soldier out of the armory. Have we tried walking down the path further? We have. There's a force field on the castle. I already clicked it, so it's too late. Okay. Hmm. Okay, well, it's time to cheat then. Let's see here. Go there, punch the soldier, knock, talk to the old man, use the tricorder, talk to both men at the table about everything, go to the wooden door, back to pay a poker playing, talk to the boy, take the rope and the food and the everything, broom, head back outside, talk to Eckert about everything, use the broom on the carpet. We did all these things. Talk to Hoffman and talk to the kids in the class. We did that. Use the science tricorder on the light fitting and the chalkboard. And that's how we found out that the chalkboard was something special. Leave the... Then talk to the teacher. We did that. Scan the wounded soldier, soldier with the tricorder. Talk to everything. Get the letter for Gretel. We did all that. And then it says, head back into town and enter the armory. Take a rifle from the cabinet. Yeah, that ain't happening. So what did we not do? Use McCoy on the keg of beer. Do we need to sabotage the beer? Oh, we did. We thought about that last time. Didn't know we could click it. Why would it be McCoy, though? McCoy? On the beer. And if we sabotage the beer, if we can't get delivered, then they would have to come here for it. That's the answer. McCoy has drugged the beer. Okay. We must have set that up already. So now let's go see if the delivery to the armory has happened. I don't know how the game keeps track of time like that. Because I was never going to think about that again. Dude, that got his beer quick. Okay, so we've got that. I guess we can use... Meh, well, now I want to tie some people up. Ties you up. Ties you up. Okay, and use the doctor on the dude. I don't want you to revive him. I just wanted to see what his condition was. Can you scan him at least? Wow, that's why you make the big bucks. Okay, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Let's just go steal stuff. Not if we have to blow up stuff. Hi, I got a rifle! Might. Uh, let's see if we can talk to this dude now. Well, we have him tied up now, so maybe we can get the doctor to do this guy. Go ahead and have your bad feeling, but... Dude, you shot him in the cheek! He's up. Ah-ha-ha. -ha. Maybe. Let's see. I have a gun. Yes. Oh, that's cool. The press. That's uh, pretty trusting after what you just did. Okay, and we got to keep the gun. Wait a minute. Did he tie him back up? Right. Okay. Let's head back over to... Oh, that's the wrong place. Let's head over this way. Head back over to Debar. To the tavern. 
with the drugged beer. Dude, you drugged all the beer, didn't you? These guys don't seem to care. The barrels are gone. They must have picked up their load. You say that. Hmm. All right, let's go show the guy the transfer papers. Hello, guy with the transfer papers. Look what I brought you. I don't have the transfer papers with me. I wonder if that's bad. Did we need to pick the papers up? Oh, why didn't they think to pick up the papers that they had signed? I go all the way back where we left a dude unconscious and another one tied up because we're the good guys. Armory. Okay, take the papers. We did. We had to actually take the papers. All right. Boy, sometimes these point-and-click adventures, they just want you to keep having a point-and-click. Off to tavern. I love to go to tavern. I always order drink and have sandwich. Do we have papers to give him this time? Yeah, papers. So, about that rumor. I thought I already did. That's such a weird request. All right. Now let's go talk to the teacher, see if we can freak her out. That chalk is anthrax. Water is good. Uh, armory, no, school teacher, school teacher, go this way. There we go. Did we get a letter? Oh, good grief. He agreed. Did he put a letter down on the table and we didn't pick it up again? Okay. Back and forth, back and forth. You know what we want. Hmm. Oh, he wasn't the one. This is the superintendent. Haha! <laughs> Absolutely. Wow. 
Will do. Okay, so this time take the paper. Yeah. 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 All right. We took the paper this time. Yeah. And with this paper, I will rob the school. I love that that building back there is still on fire. Okay. Reads the paper. Oh, then we must. Oh, look, he actually took it this time. I didn't have to click the extra thing. Put it in your pocket, Jim. There you go. What is the shrug for? Okay, so now we have the clock, and we have the board, and what else do we have? At the clock, we got the board, we have a gun, we have a locket. Um... Oh, yeah, we still need that TNT. Here. He's still out cold. Okay, do we threaten him again? Apparently not. I will tell you nothing. Okay. Can you scan it and get the combination? Try nitrotoluene. Yes, we know. I would require the exact combination. Great. And looking at the hint book, where'd my hint book go? The hint book says to get the TNT out of the thing. That's a great hint. Turn him with the rifle. Take the note. Yeah, it just says get the TNT. Oh, maybe there is something else we can do here. Did we medical scan you? Yeah, well, who put those there? Yep. That's a great use of mind melding. Stealing information. Hey, we got another viewer. How's everybody doing? Trelane. Yeah. That's scary. Wow. This dude is crazy. Way to bury the lead, Spock. I don't need the numbers. Just go do it. Use the Spock on the safe. Give me the TNT. Then let's go blow something up. Yeah! Get the red candle, Spock. Okay. You can't hear the game... 
Are you serious? Why are we this far in before somebody mentions that? Can you hear it now? You missed the entire mind meld sequence, man. Spock was deep in there. Ah. Oh. That's that's so disappointing. Can you hear the game now? Awesome. I can't believe nobody told me that. Man, these guys have been talking this whole time. I think we're going to have to make that adjustment one more time on Saturday. I don't remember when I switched the sound server over. Anyway, we're supposed to blow all this stuff up so the chalkboard can go in the airplane. You put the chalkboard in the triplane. Right on. Uh, that's a stick. We put the clock in the plane. You put the clock in the triplane. It puts the clock in the plane. Uh, the locket. You put the locket in the triplane. That was all the things, right? Affirmative, Captain. How are you gonna blow that up without, you know, well dying? That's, uh, it's not the way I would have done it. Bling! I suppose I should be angry at you, Captain, with your act of vandalism. Didn't even get to like go. Beautiful aircraft. But then, barbarians will be barbarians. There's only one barbarian in the room, Trelane, and I'm looking at him right now. Release my ship, Trelane. Uh-huh. And don't you ever grow up, Trelane? You may have powers of a god, but that doesn't even come close to making you a man. There's only one barbarian in the room, Trelane. Release hmm. my ship. Trelane. Which one should I use? And don't you ever grow up, Trelane? You may have okay. forgotten. Why would I want to be anything so inferior, Captain? Inferior? You have vast powers, but no feeling, no soul, Trelane. You cannot create. You can only imitate, and very poorly at that. You should not really, you know, strive to piss off people with godlike powers, I think. Let's start scanning. Captain, the painting is another power object. Alright, phasers on stun. The tricorder detects nothing unusual. Uh-huh. Purely decorative, Captain. The shield is too thin to withstand actual combat. And given the inefficient design of a polearm, the axe head would likely fly off the handle the first time it was used. All right. Nothing unusual about this object. The tricorder detects nothing unusual about Trelane. I think I didn't click on him right. Does not register him, Captain. It is as though he were not there. Eh, he's not here. Take the what? thing, put it in the Captain, fire. It is a handsome portrait. If you think you can destroy it, I would think again. This one's positively indestructible, just like it's... You remember the last time we met Trelane, the fire had no heat? I wonder if they want to use say that again. The hospitality of Gothus is yours. Feel free to warm yourself at the fire and admire my trophies. What about the bear? So like my rug? I killed the creature myself hunting alone in the Arctic wastes. That was before the war, of course. Of course. Perhaps it will make a perfect shroud for you, Kirk. After I've dealt with you once and for all. You don't seem to be in any kind of hurry to do that. Uh, McCoy. See if you can help this bear. I 
Don't think I can bring the bear back to life, Jim. You didn't even try. I've only got one weapon. Is it really necessary to use firearms? It's a power object. You remember what happened the last time I shot one of his power objects? Yes, it was destroyed. Trelane's power faded until he activated a secondary power object. We need to find a more permanent solution, Captain. Okay, shoot him Why, then. Captain, do you need another demonstration <laughs> of my flawless abilities in marksmanship? I don't suppose he'll just let us leave, right? Do you have a plan? I do not see how firewood can help us against Trelane. Look, Spock, if you're not part of the problem or part of the solution, you're part of the problem. Oh, you know what? These little bottles on the mantelpiece have ships in them, like Enterprise type ships. This bottle contains That's the a Shinobi. realistic reduction of the SS Shinobi, a freighter. Very realistic reduction. This bottle contains a very realistic reduction of the SS Manikier, a Denebian transport. This bottle contains a very realistic reduction of the USS Zimbabwe. My ship! Bring it back, or I'll... This one seems wow. more savage than the last one of your officers who made the same mistake. My compliments, Captain, on having such a spirited crew. Truly a testament to your fine leadership. Release him, Trelane. He's done you no harm. Take me in his place. He's not a member of my crew, and you know it. Besides, he looks rather peaceful standing there. <laughs> He's done you no harm. Take me in his place. Ah, the gallant captain, intervening on behalf of one who despises him. Don't worry about him, Captain. Worry, worry about, about yourself. yourself. Ooh. I suppose I should thank you, Captain. Later, Commander. This bottle contains a I got the Enterprise production of the USS Enterprise. <laughs> Jim, is that what I think it is? It is the Enterprise, Doctor. Mm -hmm. It is functioning normally, aside from being trapped. The crew are alive and well. My latest We're huge! Gentlemen, putting warships in bottles, celebrating the grand martial heritage of your species. Well, Captain, I suppose you're about to make your grand plan of escape? You must think you're pretty clever, Trelane, with your replica of the First World War. Why should I have to make a grand plan to escape from a loser like you? I don't have to do anything. Eventually, your parents are going to find you and discipline you again. Ah, uh, that's us. Fortunately, Kirk, my parents are otherwise occupied. They won't interrupt me when I'm winning. But you have to compete first before you can win. Send the others away safely, and I'll give you a chance at revenge. Mm, maybe. That's odd. I was sure I detected other power sources converging towards us when I was on the Enterprise. There's a bluff. You weren't winning, Trelane. You never were. You had tremendous powers, you had a weapon, and I didn't. And you still fell on your face. Ah, That's let's do I this. Sure I detect no, you didn't. It's nowhere near me. But there's no harm in making sure we aren't seen. Poof. All right, kick his... Oh, crap. She's gone. Now I have to think of the proper way to destroy my enemies. You have a brief respite before your destruction. Well, Captain, I suppose you're about to make your grand plan of escape. You must think you're pretty clever, Trelane, with your replica of the First World War. Why should I have to make a grand plan to escape from a loser like you? I don't have to do anything. You must think you're pretty clever, Trelane, with your replica. Thank you, Captain. I wasn't complimenting you, Trelane. I've never seen such a piece of nonsense in my life. Although you could have made that trench scene much more realistic. Really, Captain? Look into the memory banks of the Enterprise, Trelane. Recreate what's in there, and let me show you firsthand the glory of one of the bloodiest conflicts in human history. Not a lie, just misinformed. Use the memory banks of the Enterprise, Trelane. Recreate what's in there. War at its most realistic and terrifying. 
Hmm, that was a bit of a glitch there. Oh, it's realistic now. Captain Kirk, I hope you had a good reason for dragging me out in the mud in the middle of the rain. Look around you, Trelane. Is this glory? Is this valor? Smell the stench of death. While knights fought in the sky, millions died in the mud. Diseased, starving, mutilated. Is this the sort of game you want to play, Trelane? Hmm. For once in your life, Trelane, shut up and look around you. Maybe. Look around, Trelane. Take in the ambience, the romance of this place. Look at the proud soldiers celebrating the glories of war. Look around you, Trelane. Let's it's do like this these one. These people lost, Kirk. Shame and suffering is supposed to befall the losers in war. These were the winners, Trelane. Yeah. You're inhuman, Trelane. You play games with people and ignore their suffering, just like the people who sent these men to die. You should have been a politician. Ooh. If you have any real courage, Trelane, if you want to experience real warfare, put yourself in their place. No powers, no titles. Experience the glory of war firsthand, like these men did. That's us. But aren't you inferior supposed to die like that? Aren't you supposed to throw your lives away in feudal wars? Or die as meaningless non-entities? Dying a useless death without glory? No one is useless, Trelane. And no one wants to throw away their life in a futile war. We've changed, Trelane. We've grown up. It's time you did too. Wow. You're no fun anymore, Kirk. No fun at all. You're preachy just like them. Anything I'm interested in is always wrong. Release my ship. Trelane, look around you. Does this look right to you? Trelane. You don't go around hurting people and expect them to treat it as though they're having fun. The first thing a life form learns is to avoid pain. Release Trelane. Yeah. Then how do you explain this delightful scene around us? Some politicians decided that the only way to avoid getting hurt was to send other people out to get hurt. We've tried to outgrow that. Not always successfully, as Mr. Ellis might tell you, but we try. Captain, yours is the most confusing species. No joke. Perhaps I should spend some time thinking about it before I talk with you again. Captain's Law. The missing starships have been restored to normal size and are about to return to their assigned missions. It was horrible, Mr. Spock. Trelane recreated one of the greatest tragedies in human history. I've seen a lot, but even that... The waste of lives is appalling, even when one operates by pure logic. When one considers what those millions of lives that were lost might have done for humanity had the war never taken place. Well, now that we've taken care of business... Ow! I'll have to see Dr. McCoy about my shoulder. Something happened, Captain. Mr. Ellis and I. I see. Are your differences <laughs> settled? I'm afraid not, Mr. Spock. We each won a game of zero-G squash, but I'm afraid he was called back to the Zimbabwe before we could have a rubber match. I think I dislocated my shoulder with a rather wild swing in the second game. Then logic suggests that your injury would have caused you to lose the match. I suppose so. He's a good player and a good officer. I'm putting in a request to bring him on the Enterprise. That was should a... be fascinating. Okay. Ooh, who's this? <laughs> I'm Captain Gernsbeck of the Shinobi. I thought I would thank you personally before we left for Sephis. It's Gretel! Nice to meet you, Captain. Have we met before, Captain? There's something familiar. Perhaps we did, on some other planet, in some other star system, sometime long ago. Just answer the question, Kirk! Message from Star Oh, crud, this is where my ship is still destroyed. Comment away. Very good! That's it? No points like we did before? Light and darkness. Captain, while exploring an uncharted star system in the Deneb sector, we received what we think is a message from a distress beacon on Onias 2. We're en route to investigate. Onias 2. I gotta get my map. Uh, navigate. Onias 2 is number 11, which is uh, this orange one, I guess. 
Oh crud, we forgot to save the game. We're gonna go straight into a battle, die, and then have to do all that over again. It may be nothing, Captain, but a scan of the planet's atmosphere indicates a high concentration of rare gases trapped in the planet's magnetosphere. Gases, you say? be the first time as a spot, but we'll never be able to tell if we don't check it out. After all, to seek out new life and new civilizations is our mission to boldly go where no man has gone before. You don't have to quote the plaque. Infinitive, Captain. What? The proper grammatical to go boldly. <laughs> where no man has gone before. Somehow, I think it loses a little in the translation. Uh, split infinitives are fine. Uh, let's see. Save the game. Save new game. Yes. Too many games. Okay, fine. We've got to replace a game. We will replace the chalkboard, I guess. Okay, so... Is there a planet around here? May I respectfully remind the captain that we haven't... I didn't mean to hit that button. Shut up. I just wanted to see if I could see the planet. If we turn all the way around. No, what if we go down? Okay, if I type O Evidence for orbit. Huh. The planet comes out of nowhere. It's purple. Alright. So, who do we talk to? Let's talk to... No, not Scotty. Let's talk to um, the Vulcan. What's his name? Spock! I knew it. Okay, there we go. Two faint life forms. Faint life forms. It is difficult to distinguish, given the discharges in the planet's magnetosphere. It is, however, safe to transport to the planet's surface. Okay. Uhura? Can we contact anybody? Okay. I don't know who else to talk to about anything. I guess we beam down? Captain, our sensors will not be particularly useful to you while you're down there. And communications may be erratic, sir. We'll be fine, okay. Lieutenant. What reason is there to worry? I'm afraid, Captain, there are plenty of precedents. We'll be here if you need us. You should listen to her. She's smart. track the signal to its source. It is near the life forms. The rest of the planet is quite desolate. No sign of life or technology. The atmosphere is thin, but breathable, and okay. detect numerous micrometeorite hits. That's amazing. There are amazing. three unformed planets in the system. It's no wonder. There are so many micrometeorites. I'm surprised any Class M planet hasn't been pulverized by now. It is not inconceivable, but it is certainly unusual. That's right. To it, Spock. You, McCoy, and I. Oh, and tell Bones to see if a genetic specialist is available. If there are only two life forms, we might be privileged to see life at its earliest stages. Let's go interfere. <gasps> no red shirts. I'll be certain to use creepy in my log entry about this. All right. Now that we've put him in his place for saying creepy like you've never come up with anything dumb, let's look around. The dry, dusty red dirt cakes your boots in a thin patina that will be difficult to brush off. Patina? The dry, dusty red uh -huh. dirt. Don't say patina wrong again. The doorway is unobstructed and appears normal except that it is taller and slightly more narrow than a terrestrial doorway. Okay. The building, which is old and pitted with micrometeorite strikes, appears ancient, and if built by humanoids, was created for tall individuals. Alright, where's the Spock? Scan stuff. That would not be practical, Captain. Well, scan that. that. Not be practical, Captain. Scan that. that. Not be practical, Captain. Nothing is practical, Spock. Let's go inside. Wait, can we go out here? <gasps> we can go over there. Ooh, I found a thing. An antenna. I wonder what it was meant for. 
that's what we're here to find out, Mr. Johns. All right, let's play with it. The array dish appears to have escaped much of the damage visited upon the rocks. Kind of amazing. Spock, see what you can do with this. Captain, until power has been returned to these controls, there is nothing I can do. Okay, can we tell what it does? The array appears to have deployed recently, which explains its lack of damage. The focal point of the dish is aligned approximately 35 degrees above the horizon. Okay. Let's see, can we go this way? Right on. Let's go back. Can we go this way? Yes. Ooh, another one. I guess that's what he meant by array. There's more than one, so we got this one here. Which I can only imagine is in the same shape. And another one over here. And then we can go down. Nothing. Okay, so we got three of those. That's fine. That's fine. And let's go plug them back in. Whoever built this place, all this equipment looks brand new and in good repair. Let's mm -hmm. hope the Enterprise looks this good when it's this old. We should be very careful about how we proceed, Captain. I have a strange feeling that evil is lurking nearby. Evil, Henson? Evil. Something that wants to evil. Souls, sir. We must avoid that at all costs. Oh man, you just just begging to be made fun of. Let's look at this thing. Captain, these doors protect the unit from debris when not in use. Mm -hmm. Aside from minor differences in styling, this looks remarkably like a Tellarite 8000 DNA sequencer. Wow. If not for a thin covering of red dust, you would assume this DNA replicator had just been unboxed and set up. I could assume Captain, that. These doors protect the unit from debris when not in use. What's the green goo? This appears to be a patch of rust and dust that has accumulated on the machine's surface. What is it, made of copper? If not for a thin covering of red dust. Let's clean off the rust. Oh, that worked. A unique use of a phaser but adequate for removing the deposits from the apparatus. Okay. I was unaware you had studied genetics at the academy, Captain. I was unaware you had I studied didn't. That's why we have the, the dude that we brought with us. Let's see. Let's use dude on the computer. Wow. This is almost identical to an 8000 sequencer. Yay. Cutting edge federation technology. Just input oh, we lost some viewers. And the sequencer analyzes it so it can who be hung spliced up. or altered on the genetic level with the replicator. Okay. No effect. Well, there's that. Let's go exploring. A viewing port into the genetic holding tank. Fun. The computer console appears normal, though non-functional. Non-functional. alien computer. Well, let's alien compute something. Spock, you're an alien. See what you can do. The narrow width of the keyboard indicates the creatures who designed it were possessed of hands with only three fingers and a thumb. I really wonder if he can actually say I that about it. I the logic in that action. This appears to either affect input or deliver output. I suspect this allows access to the void beyond the portal. Mm hmm Spock, what do you make of this? Merely the casing, Captain. The truly important parts of the machine are the keyboard and the portal. I don't know anything about these consoles.
computer is functional, but I detect no connection between the keyboard and the machine itself. Hmm. Apparently, it was designed this way. Weird. So, let's go check the other rooms. Another one. Ooh, and a dude. I welcome you, otherworlders. I beseech you, save us from that which seeks our destruction. How fitting for a devil to appear on a world that looks like hell. Enough okay, that, dude. Johns. This is just another xenobiological entity. Correction, Doctor. This is a projection of a xenobiological entity. Jim, the only life form readings are within that machine behind the portal. Single cell organisms with an extremely high reproductive rate, but a very poor metabolism and an extremely mm. short lifespan. Can we talk to the dude? Greetings. I am James T. Kirk of the USS Enterprise. What can we do for you? Hmm. So, when do the wicked witches and goblins show up? Your right. emergency beacon and statement lead me to believe you see more of an emergency than exists here. Greetings. I am James. I am Visner of the Alpen people. Our race possessed this I'm world and Visner of Omicron Percy I-8. No, we do not aid them. Wars and destruction are not things we value, Visner. Our prime directive prevents us from interfering in internal struggles. But at the request of all parties, we might negotiate a compromise. Forgive me, but I find that claim insupportable. This world, while grim, hardly looks like a battleground. Who is trying to destroy it? Wars and destruction. You will take that one. To confusion in speaking with Azra. But it is understandable that you want to hear his side. Before acting, my assessment of you suggests that most of you will fight the clouding of logic and will see through Azra's deception. Please report to me your success. Interesting. This is a red and blue pages scenario, isn't it? If we go through the other doors, is there another guy who's going to tell us bad things about this one? It is. Greetings, gentle beings, and welcome. I am Azra of the Omegan people. You are the salvation we have long sought. Thank you for answering our summons. An angel! Actually, it is a projected image of an angel, Mr. Jones. Jim, somewhere in that machine behind the portal are single cell organisms. They have a healthy metabolism and long lifespan, but an extremely low rate of reproduction. Is the angel a projection of the single-celled organism? Do we need to bring these things together? Does it have a long life and a good reproduct or a good um, what did he say? Metabolism. So where's the emergency? Greetings. I am James T. Kirk of the USS Enterprise. What can we do for you? All right. I know you're just a projection. Let's speak with your real masters. Mm, Greetings. Don't I be am, mean. I am Azra of the Omega. Ancient and venerable race, which labors to prevent the domination of this world by the forces of darkness. We require you to expunge this place of our mortal enemies. Captain, the most worthwhile purpose in life is to fight against the forces of darkness. We must help him. Enemies? This world is so barren that all the life on it is located right here. If you have mortal enemies, we've not seen them. Who are you talking about? Our prime directive prohibits us from taking part in wars on one side or the other. It would be seen as intervention. We are willing to negotiate a compromise. You will forgive me if I don't fall for a pretty face. I'm not about to expunge anyone. And I will take no action until I've heard both sides of the story. Enemies? Yeah, who's I the enemies? Of the Alphans, of course. They are foul, cold creatures who pervert even the most sacred ideas. They cling to the heretical belief that life began within darkness. Of course, we recognize light as the life bringer. All things began in a brilliant, life-giving burst of light. A burst of light? That's a common motif in creation stories. Or in accordance with the big 
Bang theory of the universe's creation. You must expunge the world of the Alphans. Yeah, go spray a little alcohol in a petri dish. I know you can accomplish what you need to do with the equipment that is present. Be warned, Visner can be very persuasive. I await your report of success. There's no need to leave. We've already talked with Visner. I have to say that I find many of your claims insupportable. Insupportable? How can you defend a race whose very existence is based upon deceit and foul mm. lies? Foul lies? Their position contradicts yours, but there are similarities. Mm -hmm. You dwell on your differences so much, you just can't see them. Frankly, Azra Visner is quite rational and makes your impassioned pleas for genocide sound psychotic. For a being of goodness, you're rather bloodthirsty. Maybe you should try practicing what you preach. Foul lies. Their position contradicts yours, but there are similarities. Mm. You dwell on your differences so much, you just can't see them. Captain, they're as different as angels and demons. Similarities? They are beings of shadow. They mock our perfection. They are our antithesis, created after we were to destroy us and our potential for good. You repeatedly proclaim yourself good and suggest you are morally superior to the Alphans. Why don't you act like it? If you're yeah, so maybe. Perfect, how come you need our help? Ooh. You said they were created after you were. How do you know that? <laughs> we know if you're older, then... Because that is what our sacred scriptures tell us. In the light we were born and commanded to shun that which dwells in darkness. This clearly tells us that we came first. Surely you can see that. Or is it that you have some other interpretation of the event that birthed the Omegans? Does your sacred scriptures explicitly say that no beings were created before you? Dare you suggest they came first? Let's see what we've got. Two single-celled organisms, each incapable of survival on their own. One lives in light, the other lives in darkness. Each must live a limited and unstable life without the other. Captain, do you know what you're doing? Allow us to unite you again. Your combined strengths will make you a viable entity again. The persuasiveness of your arguments has opened for me a door through which I spy a future and a truth that I have long denied. Wow, that worked. You are correct. Perhaps being only half of a whole, I could not see the solution. Yes, I desire your help for my people. Interesting. <gasps> Let's grab us a sample. The sample dish feels warm to the touch. Is that good or bad? Let's go get the other sample now. This slot is shut tight. No dust either. Maybe I should ask Spock to take a look at this. Yes. Well, if he has to get all the way over there to find that out. Reactivating Visner, Captain. Hey, Viz, buddy. Long time no see. Was it not as I said it would be? Are not the Omegans a fanatical race, uninterested in anything but fulfilling some self-contradictory messianic destiny for Yeah, themselves? we took a jar of them. I assume they filled your heads with their warped theology. Frankly, Visner, Azra is certainly committed to his cause, but hardly the blood-mad fanatic you describe him to be. Warped theology. It is true they differ greatly from you, but your worldviews are based on common beliefs. You see things from different perspectives, that's all. Hmm. Frankly, warped the yeah, odds. Yeah, that. Utterly ungrounded in logic. They are creatures of superstition. They invaded our world, then sought to drive us from it. How can you suggest we are anything alike? You question my grounding in logic, but you don't apply logic to an examination of Alphan beliefs. Aren't they concerned with the same things you are? You're supposed Maybe. to be a reasonable one. Your facts can't be very persuasive if you aren't willing to try and find common ground. Mm. You said they usurped your place in the world, which suggests prior ownership by you. What evidence do you have to support that concept? You question my ground. How can their concerns match ours when they reach conclusions based on superstition and a document which is largely allegorical in content? 
logic, when applied to your arguments and theirs, suggests that you have had the same experience. The two of you are united in a common drive to attain an end. Your mutual distrust reflects a fear of facing your destiny. Realizing your full potential will not be without risk, of course, but it is possible. Meet us, meet the Omegans halfway, and we will help you fulfill your destiny. Not a bad yeah, give us a sample. Freud would be proud. Captain, Way to point it out. Ignoring the obvious. Your position is unassailable and points out the one and only purpose for our races. Thank you, Captain Kirk, for making me see that. Yes, I desire your help for my people. Help us. All right. Oh, we got another slot. Let's take another Petri dish. Now we can go work on them. You take the alpha sample, which feels cold, cold to the touch, touch this time. No effect. Let's see if we can go make something warm to the touch. Okay. Can we play with the... No, I don't think that's necessary. No, I don't think that's necessary. Hmm. Can we get him to do it? No effect. Captain, we have to run there a we go. source samples through the sequencer before I can make a composite sample with the replicator. Okay. So can you do no it? Effect. Captain, we have to run a set of source samples through the sequencer before I can make a composite sample with the replicator. Wow, this is almost identical to a Oh, this one works. I don't know why, but I could not get a good sampling. Maybe we should No, put I don't think that's necessary. No, I don't think that's necessary. This sample sequence is like a dream. Okay, so we did it on the right machine that time. Maybe now he'll let me put it in the no, other one? No, I don't think that's necessary. Okay, what is going on to this guy? Anson, let Dr. McCoy try that troublesome sequence. There we go. Good job, sir, if I can have some peace and quiet here. Mr. Johns, I think Dude. I'm getting a clear picture here of your difficulties. Do you realize that insubordination is an offense punishable by a court-martial? Did he say punchable? It looks to me that you're deliberately trying to mislead us. That's not a good career move. That is Don't right. Run, Anson. No one is criticizing you. I just need answers. I appreciate the offer, Captain, but I know what's right and wrong here, so I don't need your help. Ensign, I appreciate wow. your situation, but this is not the time for philosophy. You have a job to do. Ensign, you are here as a genetic engineer, not as a philosopher. I expect my orders to be obeyed, and if you have a problem with them, I don't expect to be deliberately misled. Yeah. I could really use a Tellarite security officer right now. <laughs> Ensign, you are I regret my attempt to mislead you. I will accept whatever punishment you feel is necessary. What is it you think I'm asking you to do, Ensign? You don't understand, Captain. Look at the Alphans and look at the Omegans. There's so much evil in the universe. You're asking me to destroy a race of good and beauty by mixing their genetics with something ugly, something evil. I can't do it. Ensign, I think you're confusing things. The Alphans and Omegans are single-celled creatures. While the projections may have seemed sophisticated and human, they are constructs. You can nothing the about humans and tell what you have there for DNA could never produce such a creature, can't you? I am asking you to do nothing of the kind, Ensign. You believe in the struggle of good against evil, and I respect that. But the application of your philosophical perspective is misplaced here. The Alphans and Omegans are single-celled creatures. They are no more capable of good or evil than a triple. Can't you see that? I don't know, man. I've seen some single-celled things do some really bad things. Be taken at face value. Both sides have agreed to this. McCoy says there are only single-celled organisms, and you're smart enough to know if he's right or wrong. Use your instruments. Be a geneticist, and then make a decision. Don't make a decision. Do your you orders. Single cells. You're right. I've been a real idiot. 
I suppose I should. Why does it keep a freezing like that? It wouldn't hurt. Some of the wisest people in history have written for children. Never judge an input card by its label. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that was the trap I fell into and kept me from doing my job and made me deceive my captain. If it's any consolation, you're not very good at deception, Ensign. Thank you. Ha <laughs> ha. I hope you'll give me a chance to correct my mistakes. Do you think we're really meant to combine the two races? You sure, why not? The sequences. You can tell whether they're compatible. Sir, the sequencer indicates that they need to be combined for their continual survival. But how did you know? I listened to Dr. McCoy. It seemed the logical conclusion, given the evidence. Thank you, Captain. Okay, so now... Maybe we can put the blue no, one in the blue? I don't think that's necessary. Oh. In here? The alpha sample is sequenced, sir. Captain, we have to run a set of source samples through the sequencer before I can make a composite sample with the replicator. I thought we just did that. So we did the blue. Maybe we do the yellow again? This sample sequence is like a dream. I was unaware you had studied genetics at the academy. I didn't, smart aleck. Captain, we have to run a set of source samples through the sequencer before I can make a composite I sample with the replicator. I could have sworn we did. To use the other computer again? The two samples have joined together as okay. easily as if they had once been a whole and had been separated before. Any race that had this technology 50,000 years ago could possibly have been able to perform such a dissection and kept both halves alive. Captain, with the samples sequenced together, I'm ready to use the replicator to produce a sample with the combined genetic data. Okay, finally. I am producing a new culture, Captain. Captain, the genetic sequence is still stored in the computer. If we need another sample, the replicator can generate it. In case we bust this one. Yellow and blue make green. I officially christen this life form the Gammons. Oh, good grief. No effect. No effect. Quit it. Let's go to the third computer and shove it in there. Maybe he can help us turn the power on to those outside things. Green in a hole. Well, Jim, it doesn't look like it does anything. I guess I spoke too soon. That'll teach you. It took it in. It looks as if the colony is getting a foothold in there. Life energy levels are spiking. They're building to a level sufficient for sending out a signal 100 times stronger than the one that brought us here, Captain. The gammon sample appears to be thriving in this environment. Good. Now we go spray alcohol on the other two Petri dishes. Thank you for your hard work. You have fulfilled the design. To tell you. Thank you for your hard work. You have fulfilled the design for which we were created. I am authorized to tell you. It would appear there is more to this message than we are receiving. Kirk to Uhura, are you receiving any strange subspace or radio signals? Captain, there is a neutrino based transmission being broadcast near your current position. Neutrinos? From a point of unknown origin, probably from another star system. Our equipment is not designed to handle it. Though given one or two weeks, we might be able to identify patterns and extrapolate you what You have three minutes. We'll work on the problem from here. Kirk out. Hmm. Okay, let's start scanning things. This projection is being cycled at 1,000 frames a second, which suggests the equipment was designed to function in the presence of a race that has a sharper visual acuity than the human or Vulcan races. Vulcan's a race? There is power going into these circuits, Captain, making it capable of function. The computer is functional, but I detect no connection between the keyboard and the machine itself. Apparently, it was designed this way. There's gotta be something about that. 
I don't know anything about these consoles. The narrow width of the keyboard indicates the creatures have designed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I sense them. the narrow width of. I do not. This appears to either affect input or deliver output. I suspect this allows access to the void beyond the portal. All right, let's uh, let's head out and see what's going on now. Maybe we've restored power now that we've got that thing running. Yeah, play with the satellite. This appears in pretty good shape for having been out for so long. I wish I knew how to use it. Use the Spock on a machine. The array dish appears to have escaped much of the damage visited. Good. Captain, until power has been returned no to power. the controls, there is nothing I can do. We never scanned the other ones. Polygon, welcome. There's only a couple of viewers left. I wonder what's going on. Indicate the device is aligned at an angle approximately 35 degrees above the horizon. There appears to be some sort of anomaly in the control program that has misaligned the controls, but my tricorder is unable to determine it. Without a method of determining the proper angle, I am afraid I cannot realign the dish. Mm, both of those are 35s. We are getting close, I can feel it. The array is a precision instrument. Mm-hmm. Captain. Mm-hmm. A standard volcanic rock registering 3.5 on the Mohs hardness scale. This appears in pretty good. Spock. The array dish appears. Captain. Volcano. These rocks are approximately 1.3. Good information. Can we use our this communicator? Tell Mr. Scott that everything is fine, Kirk out. Hmm. Scotty, I need a calculation from the main computer. There we go. While I know the computers on the Enterprise aren't quite as good as our engines, I think she'll manage. I am sending the problem. Oh, that was too easy, Mr. Spock. The angle is 32.5 degrees. Thank you, Mr. Scott. All right, get to cranking. Not now, Scotty. Kirk out. I'm surprised at the high degree of engineering evidenced by this array. I didn't click you. I clicked him. The array is a precision instrument that shows up. Captain, I cannot realign the sensor until power has been returned. The control in sharp contrast to the in sharp 
Harsh wind. Hmm. I believe that will be a volcanic in origin. Strikes me this place is hot enough already, thanks. Strikes me this place. Jim, this is. Strikes me this. I feel like there's something around here we can shoot. Okay, reading the book again. Find all three, scan them with your science tricorder, then go back to the right satellite. We're here. Scan the control me mechanism, then scan the rock in the background. We did this! Scan the control mechanism. This appears to be similar to Federation technology, Captain. Its control principles are similar to the Madai sensor dish on Vulcan. It has locked the array at a 35 degree angle. Without knowledge of the code control sequence, I cannot adjust it. I also detect that its power core is not functioning. It operates on geothermal energy, tapping into heat from the ground below. Heat from the ground below. That's what I was trying to do. There we go. The energy level is insufficient, Captain. We cannot generate the energy level needed to provide geothermal energy with hand phasers. If it's thermal energy you want, Jim, I remember this planet that used a starship's phasers on a microwave setting to heat the surrounding rock to provide temporary power. I don't want to be standing here for that. We could use the same technique here, but the beam would have to be extremely precise. Yeah. If we targeted the wrong section, we could melt the rock and destroy the array. Sounds good. Let's do it. Mr. Scott requests to know if... Tell Mr. Scott that everything is... Oh, okay, I guess not. Um, we shall scan the various things in the area first. These rocks are approximately... You said that? These rocks... Yeah. Captain, although this rock formation does indirectly lead to the thermal core, I suggest finding an area that would allow a more direct transfer of energy. Okay, how about here? These rocks... Okay, let's go start the next one. These rocks are These rock These rocks are And the next one. rocks make me think about ice yeah 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 we weren't here for that I went to scan them this rock is a secondary formation produced by the interaction of plates earthquakes and volcanism this rock is a this rock is hmm These rock These These rock It's got to be somewhere. I guess we were closest on this other screen. Almost. This appears to be the most accessible spot. Finally! 
and generate geothermal energy for the array. Yeah, let's save. Save new game. Replace previous. Delete previous. Save new game. Rocks. Right before we blow ourselves up. Sulu, can you read me? Sulu here, Captain. How can I help you? The Enterprise should broadcast a low-level microwave beam at the coordinates I am sending. And Captain, you should Sulu. back up. Get ready. Stand away from the blast area. Stand by, ready for weapons position. <laughs> sending microwaves now. That is some dark red microwaves. Temperature near the power coupling is rising rapidly. I estimate a below ground temperature of 345 degrees Kelvin is required to reactivate the array. It is at 320, 330, 335, 340, 345, 350. Shut off the beam, Mr. Sue. Affirmative, Captain. Ooh, it's glowing. All right, then let's go back and fix the one that was misaligned. I am now attempting to realign the device to 32.5 degrees. You do that. It Ooh. should now be correctly aligned. All right, we fixed the array. Let's go talk to the bug or whatever that was in there. Maybe we can get the rest of the message. Help me, Kirk, you on Kenobi. You're my only hope. And talk. Thank and you, there Captain. he is. Oh, people finally! Constituting my people, and in the unexpected necessary realignment of our communications array, you have performed admirably. Of the 16 stations reporting at this point, there have been 50% fatalities, 30% oh. other failures, and only 20% successes. One group got points for style. Points for style? Is this some sort of game? <laughs> is this some sort of game? Not another alien race with a superiority complex. Who are you this time? Your appreciation is welcome, but many questions remain unanswered. Who are you? I am Sisissa, a projection of a synthesis of Azra and Visner. Clearly you know that the primitive life forms you have been dealing with are incapable of creating that in which you now stand. You will also note that the more demonic of the creatures displayed a passivity you did not expect, while the morally pure creature was aggressive and bloodthirsty. The contradictions then how is that morally pure? I take it you were testing us on our ability to deal with disparate and contradictory inputs. Yes, your reasoning ability was being tested, as well as your ability to adapt to new ideas when they conflict with deeply held beliefs. And Mr. John didn't work out for that. You passed quite admirably. The Brassica were impressed. I'm not clear on who the Brassica are. Captain, from this site, I can deduce various things about the Brassica. They are taller and more slender than we are. They are possessed of three fingers and a thumb on each hand. I suppose bilateral symmetry, and I know they possess greater visual acuity than humans. They visited this place well before humans had left the Cro-Magnon stage of development. And I note they have avoided detection by us, and presumably every other race in the universe, before they decided to send out signals to bring us to their bases. Thank you, Mr. Spock. And more you shall know as you continue on the quest. I wish you luck. Interesting. Kirk to Enterprise, Scotty, four to beam up. Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. In this case, Bones, a new beginning. We were the midwives for the rebirth of a life form. Two halves that have been made whole again. That's the way it was meant to be. Mm -hmm. Let us hope that this is the end of Vincent John's prejudices. We can it all won't learn be. to stop judging people by appearances. 
Ensign Johns might have done well to remember the biblical representation of Lucifer appearing in the guise of an angel of light. You can never trust anybody. And people who look like pointy-eared hobgoblins are definitely at the bottom of the list. You're a jerk. It appears that Dr. McCoy did not learn the lesson of this mission either. Unfortunate, but not unexpected. Fortunately, the Alphans and the Omegans learned philosophy and personal belief are not as easily divorced from logic as some would believe. We humans attain our greatest fulfillment when both of them are united. Really, Captain? Really? But I've had enough philosophy for one day. I'd rather worry about these Brassica and their cosmic quest. Well, with me aboard, we're sure to get points for style. Yeah, that was great. Unanswered, Captain. And there's only one way to answer them. Captain, message from Starfleet. Bring it up, Lieutenant. All right. We reviewed your report from your recent assignment, Captain, and have a few comments. Well done, Kirk. Keep up the good work. I must say, however, your performance is not what we've come to expect from James T. Kirk. I guess we all have our off days, Captain. What did I do wrong? Ahead, Mr. Sulu. Warp Factor 5. Leaving orbit. Increasing to Warp Factor 5. What did I do wrong with that one? Hmm. Alright, it goes into another episode. This one is Voids, written by Scott Burney. Spock, where do you think we should start looking for this? Brassica? Logic oh. suggests that they will present us with opportunities to come to them. Captain, a It's a continuation. On screen. Captain, the USS Regulus has been forced to cancel its survey mission to the Antares Rift. We've decided to redirect the Enterprise to that mission. The USS Hood will take over for your current assignment. Of course, the Antares Rift has a rather dangerous reputation. Nothing the Enterprise can't handle. But be careful. Starfleet out. Okay, well, I guess I'm going to save the game and go ahead and... Save new game. Too save many save games. Replace, replace delete, previous. delete previous game. I don't think we need Puppy anymore. Save new game. Alright, voids. Alright, so that's going to be that. We're going to get out of here. It's a little early, but I don't want to start another uh, episode when we can cut it off here. I'm so tired anyway. I want to go to bed. So let me just quit yes, that. Quit yes, quit the game. Okay. All right. Well, we sure had fun today, didn't we, Lisa? Yeah. Anyway, uh, it is... Yeah, it's definitely bedtime. I can't think straight anymore. I'm I'm hungry, and I'm nappy, and I, I think the nap is going to win. So, I can't quit yawning. I haven't been very talkative. A lot of my viewers have kind of drifted off, so we're going to call it at an hour and a half instead of the uh, two hours. Hopefully everything will be good by Saturday. We will continue with whatever we play on Saturday. I'm not even going to pretend I can think of that stuff right now. Anyway, I thank you for being here. I will see you again next week. We've got uh, episodes 5, 6, 7, and 8 left in this game. And then we're off of Star Trek, and we'll have to find some other retro game to play in the meantime. I think we're gonna go. I think we're gonna do Mist next. Was the request. So who knows how many streams? One or two at least for for finishing this one up. So I will see you then. Until then, over and out.